almost caught us out there. Welcome back. We were having a very animated conversation during the uh, halftime interval there. Uh, Don Housen from the Sheffield Star, Sheffield Wednesday writer, Paul Beasley, ex-Blade, and uh, the very impartial James Gregg uh, joins me here as well. You know, we got to a point, uh, uh, such an interesting chat, uh, and then suddenly the ad break came, came up. Inconveniences our chat, this, this programme, it, it isn't it? It was, because we were on to fights, having fights <laughs> every, every day in training. Yeah. And and we hadn't even mentioned Vinnie Jones, had we? No. We ain't got to it. Maybe it could, be at, a, could be at a nine o'clock, we should have talking about Vinnie. I'll... Come on, then. Yeah. Give, us, give us two <laughs> minutes of Vinnie. Um, not so much Vinnie. Right. Vinnie was, Vinnie was, Vinnie was, a, he was a character, but 100%. You're talking the likes of the Billy Whitehurst to this world. Oh. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, and Bill, you know, we always said that would have been great, a clash between them two. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, but Billy, Dave used to send him in. Friday morning, he'd go, Bill, go and get yourself a nice massage and a, and a bath and get ready for tomorrow. Because Billy, you'd be doing set plays. And Billy would be flattening people. <laughs> He'd be coming, tearing in 100 miles an hour. Yeah. The centre would have to have cuts over the eyes on a Day before go, a game. Go and, have a, go and have a nice bath and look at him. Look at did him. he? Oh, God. And, and did Billy know why that was, or did he just... I think he thought he was getting a bit of good treatment off that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was. <laughs> but, um... Would he come in here for a chat? Billy Whitehurst, because I've always, yeah, everybody be you meet from around that era says that he was the hardest man in football, yeah. bar none. I can tell the story, Alan, I'll just tell the quick story. It is a quiz, it's funny, because we played Billy, Whitehurst, we yeah. played Billy and, and we were both injured, and we go to Allen Road, and it's a Tuesday night reserve game, and I'm coming back from injury. So I'm just, in my mind, I'm thinking, there used to be a sheet going to the dressing room, and you'd have a look who was playing, centre forward, or well, I'm in for a tough game tonight. Now I'm flipping the coin into their dressing room. Yeah. And John McLaren, big John McLaren, yeah. you young boys won't know, big John McLaren, he must be thinking, I don't really need Billy Whitehurst <laughs> on, a, on a Tuesday night and it's raining at Leeds <laughs> away. <laughs> but for some reason we go out together and you, you just ran out then, you just ran out. So yeah. as we're running out, John must have just passed Billy. Yeah. And I'm thinking what John's thinking. Billy goes, you're okay, John? And John went, Great, Bill. <laughs> and Bill went, I hope you've got your gum shield in. Oh. <laughs> to John McLaren. Yeah. But his face went <laughs> white. Oh, <my> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> 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 you know, but that was Billy. Yeah. You know, you, no, you must have faced him in training. Horrendous. <laughs> Horrendous. Blow. He'd just bat you. he just literally, honestly, Alan, he'd bat you. Wouldn't think twice of it. Love that. <laughs> Pick it up and then you'd have to go again. But it? to have him on your side. Oh then that's a different animal, because he was a handful. Was he vocal girl. as well? You know, if something went wrong on the pitch, to get in the dressing room Oh, he could, affa oh, could affect people, yeah. Yeah. You know, with his voice and his presence. You know, his presence alone, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Dom, you couldn't have anybody in football now, in a football team like that now, could you? It'd be possible. Well, It'd just be a total liability. It'd never be, never be available. You're trying to think of anyone could you? in the modern era. Like that. Somebody yeah, asked me on Talksport the other night before the Wednesday Leeds game, who are the hard men in this game? Who are going to be the the real hard? And I said, well, look, I said there isn't anybody. There's nobody of that ilk no. from, from that era at all. I mean, how do you say it was in, but, yeah, tough but tapping, or, or you would, yeah, yeah, or you would say, yeah, we'll miss time, uh, you know, quite a few challenges. They get some right and they get yeah. some wrong and they get bookings, but they're just rash challenges. You wouldn't say that, you know, he's a hard man or he's is the enforcer of the team. I, I, I don't yeah. think there are that there many. There aren't any players I think like really they've gone out of the game. Someone died out. You know, the last yeah. ones that spring to mind for me are kind of Roy Keane and Duncan yeah. Ferguson. Mm. And yeah, that's well, probably he was a bit like Billy Wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was. He's, but that's players who kind of transcended that sort of yeah. they made that sort of move haven't they from that era into this current one but there's no one like that now no. it's the way the game's changed i suppose no. isn't it? it's a shame though it's a good game though it's a very exciting attacking game. fantastic to see uh, paul coots who was a recent guest here to see him return last night back on the field first team for sheffield united mm. you know that is you know a moment that i think i heard chris wilde saying it, it you know it, it so ex excited him yeah. more than even the two he, pretty he, sharp goals. I mean, he had an unbelievable impact in the first division. Unbelievable. He basically ran, he ran, the, he ran the show in the first division. Mm. You know, and, and, and I think he's, you know, he can go even further. This kid. Yeah. He's only a young boy, Incredible. and he can go further. And he's, he seems, he's infectious. 
seems to rub yeah. off on people. And he's a workhorse, completely works his socks off. Yeah. It's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where he fits in. How, how, how do you get him in the team? Norwood and who, Coots, who's, similar Who's going to drop roles? out? John yeah, good point, Dom, good point. Good I mean, point. The, the good thing is, though, is, is uh -huh. that, you know, when, when he broke his leg at Burton, Coots, yeah. is that, the, you know, the blades form by everybody's kind of mm. admission, it dropped off a little bit. Yeah. And I think that now he's back and then you've got Norwood in there as well. It's almost like a safety blanket, you know, that if something does go wrong or one of them isn't doing very well, you've got the other one there. Yeah. And I think that was, it mm. was trying to replace him. You know, Lundstrom came in, did a job. It was never going to be no. Paul Coots. The season's not going to no. be undermined for that reason. Exactly, this, yeah. This exactly. season. Do you, do you think, uh, I mean, you've got to take this seriously. I mean, third, third in the table. Um, is there a reason why they can't be promoted this season? What do you, what do you think? People will look to last year and they'll say they fell away after an unbelievable start. But yeah. I think they've got the 12 months now of experience mm. of what this league's about. Yeah. It's relentless. Um, I worked at Ipswich for three years, working down there. Mm. I went down with Paul Julian under Mick McCarthy. He was the kit man down there, which is a great, you know, he was, he was brilliant. But this is relentless. This league is relentless. It's a, a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday league, and you could play. West Brom on a Saturday, like last night, you could play West Brom on a Saturday. You could go to Derby on a Tuesday night and win, and you get beat by Burton on the Saturday. Mm. That is what this league, it's phenomenal. Which is why I think the manager's really calling for an all-out effort from everybody, including the supporters for Hull City, which everybody will look at mm. at home mm. on Saturday as, well, that's three points. But you can't think like that in the mm. championship, can you? Nope. You really can't. This no. is it. They're becoming to maintain the prime the scout. Pitch. Yeah, and so yeah. that's it. You know, they're going to be the favourites going into this weekend. Looking from afar, I personally think that uh, for United, um, the, the the key is going to be January. They got it. They didn't get it right last last January, did no. they? You know, you look at the signings. They didn't come well, off. Ryan yeah. Leonard, Ricky Holmes got the money back. The, yes, and they, more. They, they did, but yeah. uh, they signed four players who didn't make, I think, a big enough impact. James Wilson didn't. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's another example. So I, I think uh, if they recruit wisely in January and they're well placed, then there's absolutely no yeah. reason whatsoever why they can't finish and, in the play. Providing they break in significantly into the £12 million still sitting there from uh, young Master Brooks. Exactly, you yeah. Know, so the money should 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 be. It's an ownership thing though, that isn't it? Yeah. It's almost yeah, separate yeah. to the mm. one that's going on on the pitch. You know, the pitch is all going yeah. swimmingly to the board, mm. isn't But it? you would like to think that both owners will look at it and in January, if they're in a, in great shape, then this is the chance mm. yeah. to make millions upon millions and, and get into that promised land. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what, Tom, on the other side of the coin, I think in a strange way that Sheffield United's financial issue pushing up against financial fair play has done the club a favour and has been a positive mm. in some ways the progression of the youngsters they've had their opportunity you know there's not been a, an assimilation of player assimilation of players from all over the place no. you know you've managed to trim the squad a little bit more i think longer term down the line i think it's done wednesday a favour i think so but this is why this year i think was always marked as it was going to be a season of transition and that's why, to me, I think that uh, a top half finish is a good season for Wednesday. They finished 15th last year, but even now they have trimmed the squad a little bit, but to me it's still bloated in a lot of areas. And it will be next summer when the big clear out's going to take place. That's when you've got so many out of contract players on big wages, they're going to go. Uh, I would think that, um, oh, they've got to really put the hand up and they're going to have to seriously prove a point over the next six to seven months. And that's just looking at some of the injured guys from Gary Hooper to Kieran Lee. Yeah. who have barely played any football over the last year and a half. Right. They would have to come in and they would have to seriously pull it out of the bag for me yeah. to, um, to, to earn a new deal. And we, we all know what they're capable of. Those are yeah. just two examples. But again, you've got Alman Abdi, you've got Marco Mateus. It's a very long list. And, and that really is, the, I think, the opportunity where Jos Lukai, it will probably be in the next two transfer windows that he's going to really be able to actually put a proper stamp on this team. Yeah, he's, he's giving himself a platform to do, a platform yeah. to be there. I think that's the important yes. thing because there's always been that doubt. You know, if the wheels mm. came off, you know what the fans would be calling for. Mm. Talking about sports fans, uh, a rant alert uh, about events at Sheffield Steelers and the very sad departure of Paul Thompson this week.
can't profess to be an ice hockey. Well, I, I do like ice hockey, yeah. but I'm busy and I don't attend many games, see the odd one. Uh, but to see one of the most successful coaches in ice hockey apparently treated in the way that he was, to see him depart essentially because of the abuse that he was getting on social mm. media, I think is an outrage and a scandal and a shame and a tragedy in sport uh, these days at all levels. You've got a replication of that in a way with Steve Bruce yeah. at Aston Villa. There's no respect for anybody. Um, and and, I, I, and the, the finger is, is pointing, I'm, I'm looking, I've, I've received quite a few tweets about this because I've been quite active on... I saw Seth Bennett's tweets. He's obviously, you know, big on yeah. ice hockey, covers it for, you know, the BBC, familiar to these parts, from working for Radio Sheffield. And he had some interesting points to make on it. He's certainly more in the know than, you know... Than us. Was, yeah, than, than us, me, definitely. And he was just sort of making the point that what he'd done with for Sheffield Steelers as a club, he was more thinking not just about the future, but also in the whilst sort of doing it in the present as well, producing players who were going over to play in the North American leagues, which are obviously the best leagues in the world, and also still maintaining a good level of success domestically for the Sheffield Steelers. Yeah. So, um, I've got, yeah, I've got very one here from somebody called Lisa Thistlewood who said, "I've been a Steelers supporter for 26 years, and never thought I'd see the day when our own supporters were systematically trying to hound the coach." Um, social media has a lot to answer for in addition to a general decline in decent behaviour. Yeah. But I think the real shame is that we're pointing at 5% of, uh, you know, not very nice people here, uh, disrespectful people. You can't absolve the other 95% because why, don't, why do the 95% stay silent? Why don't they shout down that 5% at the time? It's all very well waiting until you lose a good mm. guy like Paul Thompson and suddenly rounding on the 5%. It's too late. It's not like he's lost the dressing room either, you know, is it? You know, quite often you see that when mm -hmm. coaches go yeah, and you think you know, the fans yeah, yeah. Are, are sort of latching on to what the players are feeling, but in that instance it was completely wrong. I so. think it's a sickness in across society, Dom. I don't know what you think, I don't know what you think, Paul, but we as a society have got to sort this out mm. where a 5% minority mm. can railroad a 95%. That is plain wrong. Yeah, I agree We've got it. to call these people out. Mm. I don't know. Something's got to be done about it. I think it's the rise in social media full stop in sport. And this, yeah. it's not just ice hockey. In fact, the, the, the Paul Thompson case, uh, it really seems to be that, that it, it's happened more and more with football, where, again, managers are the, the, getting hounded out uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, and it, the silent oh. minority or, or the... Uh, so one or two uh, matches it. from yeah, it. Yeah. Joss Lukai now, we're praising him, yeah. he's probably two defeats away yeah. for a, a, an absolute towsing on, on social media where people are trying to rip him apart. And he, let's face it, he is. No, I agree. Uh, that's, and that's, 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 and that's, that's mad. That is madness. I, I, Utter you know, madness. It shouldn't be happening, but uh, we, we just seem and to Chris be Chris Wilder's probably three or four away from that's the, the same thing. thing. That's the animal, isn't it? It's wrong, really. That's yeah. the animal at the moment. Mm -hmm. that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, at the moment, that's what it's all about. It's I don't, don't see how it can change. I, I just see it getting worse. Mm. Yeah. I don't see it getting better. Yeah. yeah. It's bad, not good. Well, well, should we talk about the yeah, you know, just what's going on locally? Bring my blood pressure down a bit. <laughs> I know, I can, I can see his boils, <laughs> his blood's boiling here. Yeah. I'm so, very annoyed about stuff. You like did that. warn people, to be I fair, did, about, yeah, about a good. ranting coming. It was, um, it was yeah. good in as well. Mm. Not bad. In the top three, Alan, yeah. I think. Uh, well, Glasgow, they're the opponents for the Steelers uh, this, uh, this Saturday. Um, yeah, it's Mark Matheson who's taking the reins maybe until the end of the season after that departure of Paul Thompson. Um, you will talk about the football. Owls, of course, two goals in two minutes. West Brom, you, know, you won't need reminded of that uh, Wednesday. Fans against West Brom last night. Blades a joint top, officially third, really. Don't get that joint top thing because they're not, are they, when you look at the table. Uh, yeah. Due to goal difference um, after that win last night against Blackburn. Blades have got Hull on Saturday at the lane. The Owls are away at Bristol on Sunday. It's a lunchtime kick off as well that one blades ladies as well last sunday uh, first win for them in the women's championship great result they replicated the men's result against aston villa with a 4-1 victory well done to them carla and co uh, no game for them this weekend yeah i went to see that enjoyed it excellent uh, some great goals it was a hat trick actually Really? Yeah, right. Striker okay. got a hat trick. I wish I could stuff. bring her name to mind. She deserves to be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got it written down. Well, she well deserves a mention. Great stuff there at Bramall Lane. You know, good yeah. good showcase for women's yeah, football. The investment sort of paid off. Uh, Sophie. 
Right, okay. Sophie Jones. Sophie Jones has come back. Patrick Hero. Well done, yeah. Sophie, yeah. Uh, for the Blades ladies in the women's championship. Uh, in non-league, Hallam there at home to Nostal Miners Welfare and Sheffield Club there away this weekend to Carlton Town. Well, Stocksbridge, they lost on Monday night 1-0 away from home, but they're at home this Saturday. And in basketball, London Lions, uh, they're the opponents for the Sheffield Sharks at Ponds Forge tomorrow night. Half past seven <coughs> tip-off. Good Friday night out, as we always say. And they'll be looking to bounce back from that loss to Bristol last weekend. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks very much, James. You're a, you're a painter and decorator these days, aren't you, Bees? Yes, I've just got a little thing going there. You might as well, because the audience are, you I'm know, looking at some business. <laughs> you thinking of the studio. Yeah. No, I'm going to jump. Well, I think things are all right. The windows are looking okay, aren't they, at the yeah, back yeah, here yeah. and everything? Good, and good, and you're, good, you're in good nick, yeah. Alan. You're in good nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah things are going really well. We, you know, a few of us are involved with it, and yeah. it's, it's going really well. Pleasing. Excellent. Right. Good to keep the mind busy, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. You've got well, to. You know, I think it's one of them. You've got to keep active. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, you know, it'd be great to stay in the game, but everyone can't. Mm. No, there's such you know, a think, lot of wastage in football. The coaches, managers. I think players. we have actually got a team of domestic ex-players. I think Brian Gale's a landscaper. Uh, yes, God. Mitch no, yes. Ward's plasters. <laughs> Carl Bradshaw's involved with brick laying. Has he You've got our own little well, firm? He's smashing the bricks down. Well, it's yeah. been, <laughs> with Brad, it could be anything. Yeah, but I mean, what characters you, know, you had in your team? Is Gale is a gentle giant. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's yourself. Obviously, I mean, Kevin Gage. Gage, yeah, do, yes, yeah. Um, you know, he's he's heavily involved now. You know, yeah, he does a bit of commentary on on the radio sometimes. Johnny Gannon, Simon Tracy, yeah. they're, they're, they're all still in the area. You yeah. know, they all still live here. They're all, you know, I keep in touch with them. Alan Kelly was in touch with me when I, I put out on Twitter that you were on, and he described you as a great defender and team man. Uh, I'll send him the check, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's coming. He's agreed to come over. Um, good, good man. In a few weeks' time, so it'd be gr yeah. great to see Alan Kelly. Tremendous on, on keeper. The show as well. Tremendous keeper. Yeah, he was. Talking of keepers, um, you know, uh, one of the big calls that Jos Lukai mm -hmm. made uh, involving the keepers, uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of reaction one way or the other. I, I'm a great, no greater supporter of. Cameron Dawson than me, and I know that you know you know, I know Cameron. Cam very well. Yeah, the last couple of games have have, have challenged him, uh, in my yeah. in my view, without being an expert on goalkeeping. I agree, and I think this is going to be a real big test now for for Cameron, and I'm sure that Jos Lukai is going to keep faith with him on Sunday. I've no doubt about that whatsoever. But if the clean sheets continue not to be there and if Cammy, um, I, 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 was, I would say that the second goal was he was partially to blame against West Brom as I mentioned earlier I would say that if, if he doesn't cut out the slight mistakes I think there's may, I, I would say that maybe two or three goals he should have done better with this season uh, and so I think if he doesn't improve a little bit, then I think he could be under pressure or it's going to leave Jos Luka with a big decision to I'm make. Wild because Smith. do you go back to Joe Wildsmith? I'm, or, I'm sure he would do that. Or does he bring in Kieran Westwood from the cold? I don't think he's going to do that. He's it's made too big mind. a U-turn. It's too big a no, U-turn. And what also, what's, what sort of message is it going to send out? Uh, what are you going to achieve by bringing Kieran Westwood back in? He's out of contract next summer. He's, he's, he's nearly 34. And uh, he's put his trust in these two young goalkeepers, mm. and the, there was, uh, you know, obviously a big debate about that uh, when he made that call a few months ago. But uh, no, getting to know Jos Lukai over the, the last ten months, I don't see him backing down on this. Once he's no. made his mind up, uh, I, I think it's pretty set. I agree with he you. Made, he made a good save though, Cam. Last no, night. he did. Well, That's very and then, important. And then save that. Min, moments yes. later, Forestieri sort of doubled the lead. So it, it was quite. Was, no, it's it true. was brilliant. Wait, no, it, yeah, was, it was a that brilliant was a fantastic save. save. Mm. And he is, a, right. he is a great shot stopper. Uh, I, I thought the Leeds game, he looked shaky. He looked nervous. Yeah. I he did, did too. command his area as well I as he can. Can I just ask you, why did he put him back in? Where did he put him in? In the first place, why I, did he I, I, decide on yeah. Cameron Dawson over Joe Wilson? 
I think um, Cameron did enough in the last three games of last season right. and they kept a few clean sheets. He went on what he saw. And yeah. uh, I understand it that the decision was largely based on that they felt that Cameron was the best with, uh, uh, with the ball at his feet. And that the distribution and playing out from the back is a, a big part yeah. of right. um, the he, philosophy of this manager. He's got so two strong feet. Uh, no, he right has, or left, he's, he's very strong. He yeah. has. I, I, I think it's just the decision making. But you yeah. do then also have to remember that he's 23, but he really is um, a baby in terms of goalkeeping because he's yeah. not even played yeah. 50 games. What know. about the guy at Bramall Lane? Dean Henderson. Well, he's, yeah. What a he's, character. I couldn't yeah. believe my eyes when I was reading the recent Blades interview. fans are lapping him up. Absolutely lapping him up. He's yeah. a big personality, he's isn't he? he? was brilliant at Shrewsbury last season. He's a big personality. You know, when he was on loan yeah. at Shrewsbury last year, um, he's got a huge future. Uh, Not surprised there with Chris, does he? Another character. You yeah. Know, yeah. He won't have nothing else, I don't think. And, yeah, another, no. and another great summer signing as well from Chris Wilde. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, you've already got a good goalkeeper yeah. there in Simon Moore. Let, mm. Let's be, be honest, yeah, yeah. he's never let anybody down there. Um, so two excellent goalkeepers. But just that edge of eccentricity sometimes in a goalkeeper, or I don't know, oh. perhaps that's the wrong word. A little bit of arrogance is necessary mm. in a goalkeeper, perhaps. You have to be confident, So exposed that position. Yeah, because yeah. again, because if you make a mistake, then uh, it's oh, inevitably going to lead, you know, lead to a goal, and you're yeah. going to cop the criticism, even if it's actually the defence or the midfield that's let you down. Mm. It's, it's the nature of the beast, isn't it? So, right. Yeah, but, I, I, but I, I think, yeah, I mean, he's a top goalkeeper, is, is Henderson, he really is. Where are we all going this weekend then? Um, I'm going to be at the lane, yeah. The lane, yeah. As a as a as a punter. You, mm -hmm. Is you doing any Radio Five live shifts? Not uh, not coming not up? this uh, not this not not football wise. No, no. no? So no. Leave it reading bulletins yeah, and stuff yeah, like all that. that stuff, yeah. Overnight. Yeah. Trying to put stuff the blades like as the trying yeah. to put the blades as the top story and failing miserably. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Well, keep trying. Well, they will be, and you won't fail miserably if things go the way they are. Mm. That's where I'm going. Bramall Lane, Sheffield United, Hull, and you've drawn the short story. You've got to go down to Bristol on a Sunday. It, yes, back to back weekends yeah. actually for me going to Bristol because I was there last Saturday for a wedding. For a wedding. Yes. You're Oh, Another so wedding, know. yes, yes. Well, I think As people keep reminding me, yes. Yeah, why yes. do they keep holding these weddings on uh, Saturday afternoons? I know, it's so know. selfish. Yes, yeah. absolutely so selfish. And yourself, I please. Think, I, think well, it'd be, I think it'd be slightly better than Altrigham away. That's right. My boys in the FA Cup at Altrigham yes. on Saturday. Jake, Jake, your son. Yeah, he's, he's, on, he's on loan. Uh, he's with Salford City, but he's on loan. He's on loan yeah. at Bradford at the moment. At Bradford. Yeah. yeah, he's doing okay. He's, and he's in there for the season loan. He's contracted to Salford for two years. He's in there at the moment and he's he's played the last 12 games doing great and he's enjoying right. his football. And you've got big hopes for him as a defender, you can teach him the other side of it. He's centre forward, on. He's on, oh, he is. Centre yeah, forward, that's what I meant. Yeah. I don't know where he gets that from. <laughs> <laughs> he's got an eye for but, goal. Yeah, but as I say, he's doing great and he's playing. You know, as you know, yeah. see the, you see these young lads, they've got to play, they've yeah. got to play football now, mm. it's tough for them. And it's good there, yeah. you know, at Salford, if he gets a chance there, yeah. they're on the up as well, yeah. aren't they? And, mm -hmm. you know, good sort of mentors, what's perhaps. That, is that, is that, what's that set up like? We've got 50 seconds. What's that set up? Very good. There? Very so good. You see the ne Nevels and the Skulls, is Yeah, there? they're always there. They're always there. I think they're always there at the game. Yeah. One of them, two of them are always there present. Got a, they've moved it on a bit. The two managers done great. they now got a, another manager, experienced manager in. They're moving it forward. Mm. No reason why they can't do it. Right, yeah. excellent. And no reason why either the, the, the Sheffield clubs or both can't be involved in the promotion shake-up at the end of the season. Absolutely. I think we all genuinely mm -hmm. feel that way yeah, in the studio this evening. I certainly think so. Yeah, it's so. a very exciting prospect. It's gonna, I think it could be one of the most exciting seasons we've ever had. And that's before we get into the first derby, which is a few weeks' time. Uh, I've booked a major guest today for that, but the pre-derby programme. More about that later. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Thank you to James. Thanks to Dom House and thanks to Paul Beasley. Well Hope to see you again soon, Bees. And uh, this will be repeated at 11pm on Sheffield Live TV. It's also on my YouTube channel tonight. See you next week. Bye. Bye.